I'm not gonna lie, folks, this is gonna hurt. Um, after being reminded about the fact that the Death Note adaptation was released on Netflix yesterday, uh, I'd completely forgotten about it after the trailers, after the short clips they showed us. I'd put it out of my mind completely because I didn't want to think about it. I didn't want to think about the implications of what if they screw it up? What if it was bad? What if it was good? I just didn't want to think about it. So um, I put it on my mind and then I saw someone post on social media yesterday um, saying they'd seen the new Death Note and I was like, ah, that was a thing. That's out. Maybe I should watch that. It's probably going to be a decision I regret. Um, but I thought, why not? Now, I honestly really, 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 really tried to not compare this too much to the anime. Because I realise it's not a full adaptation of the anime because you can't take a 36 episode series and convert it into a movie. I know that they were trying to go for something slightly different using the base material. But the problem that they have is that when you use the base material of such a beloved anime and such a very, very complicated and well written anime, it's always going to be compared to that original source material whether we like it or not, subconsciously or consciously, you're always going to be sitting there making little judgments about how that differs from the anime or, you know, how this character acts or how they look or how they sound or how that was presented. And I tried to avoid that as much as I could, but ultimately it was just too much and I ended up reverting back to my usual self and just saying, mm, but this didn't happen in the anime and this is different and this is not what should be happening. And I feel a lot better, you know, since I've been able to do that, I feel a lot better. Because if you try and watch this on, on your own, I mean, I would be very much interested in hearing the opinion of someone who had never seen the anime after watching this film. I've got a very, I've got a feeling that they would have a very similar opinion to someone who had seen the anime, but for different reasons. Um, I'm going to be flat out with you, this movie sucked. It sucked big time. Not just from the perspective of someone who's watched the anime, but from someone who just enjoys movies in general. If I had not seen Death Note, the anime, I would have still hated this movie. There'd have just been less chance that I'd have seen it. Um, it is a mess, an absolute mess. You know, it, the tone of the movie, the pacing of the movie, the, the writing, the acting... It was, it's all terrible. It's all awful. Um, I'll try and start off on, on some of the positive notes. The, the very, very few positive notes that they, uh, that they managed to scrape from this 90-minute film. Uh, 90 minutes of which I'm never, ever going to get back. Um, the first being Willem Dafoe and his voice acting for Ryuk. Spot on. Um, you know, as expected... Willem Dafoe was a great Ryuk, but the Ryuk in this film was not great, if that makes sense. I'll explain more a bit later. Um, the design of Ryuk looks pretty freaky. I kind of like the design of Ryuk. It was very faithful to the uh, the anime. They tried to make it look as realistic as possible, whilst also keeping that kind of Shinigami look. Um, and it was just very, very creepy. You know, in, in the anime... As, a, as expected, it kind of looks very cartoonish and just extravagant. But here it kind of had a very creepy sort of look to him. Um, one of the surprising things I found a bit of a positive in, again, not a massive positive, but a bit of a positive, was the actor who played L um, actually did a pretty good job at mimicking L's movements and his, uh, you know, the, the little things that he does. Um, I honestly thought that probably coming into this the biggest problem with the movie would either be light or l um and light we'll, we'll get to light we will get to light um but l for me apart from the lead up to the end of the film and some of the things he does during the film wasn't that bad you know i felt that the actor who was playing him is probably the only person in this entire production who'd actually seen the anime because um his performance was very loyal to what you'd expect from L in terms of his mannerisms. Again, unfortunately, the character of L is written down, is uh, 
destroyed by the writing of this film. Um, and that's really where the positives end. That's it. They are the two positives, two to three positives. Willem Dafoe, the designer of Ryuk, and the guy who played L matches his mannerisms pretty good. So yeah, if you imagine that's all that I can draw out of this as a positive, you can imagine where we're going to be going with the negatives, folks. Um, how much time have you got? I hope uh, I hope you're not in work, or if you are in work, I hope you're not supposed to be doing work right now. I hope you've got lots of time to sit down with me and just bitch about this film, because that's what, exactly what I want to do. Um, so yes, coming into this, the biggest problem for me was that it looked as though they dumbed like light and death note down for i don't want to say an american audience but a western audience it just so happens that it's based in america and this is very much exactly what has happened they have dumbed down and watered down the entire plot and the characters to make it more of an action-based film and i appreciate that they wanted it to be an action-based film they knew that they were not going to be able to copy all of the details of the anime. But at the end of the day, if you're choosing to make a movie based on the source material of a very complicated anime, you've got to come with, you know, you've got to be prepared for the consequences. Um, and these are the consequences. You made a shit movie. That's the consequence. Um, and I don't think anyone could really make a good Death Note movie. I don't think it's possible. I think there's too much there to jam into two hours. Um, I think if we'd have gotten a live-action Death Note TV show, that would have been a lot better, you know. Um, it wouldn't even have to be as long as the original, you know. 24 episodes would be enough to just about do it. You can cut some of the filler, um, maybe mess around with the story here or there um, to keep, you know, things fresh. And that would have been great. Instead, they've wasted God knows how many millions of dollars on... A skeleton of a story and just an absolute mess of pacing. From the first 20 minutes, we go from Light getting the notebook and being introduced to Ryuk, to killing several people, to telling Mia about the book. In 20 minutes. In 20 minutes. In fact, if you go a bit beyond that, if you go to the half an hour point, you get to the point where Kira is a god. He's a god. Now, that is about... 15 to 20 episodes worth of content in half an hour. Not going well so far. Let's talk about the characters. Let's talk about Light. Light in the show, and again, I don't want to stress this too much, but I'm going to. I don't care. If anyone here has a problem with me comparing it to the show, I don't care. I'm at this point now. I don't care. We're, we're comparing it to the show because that's what we know. That's what we love. I'll also throw in there some generalizations as to why it's bad as a normal movie, if you haven't seen the show. But yeah, Light in the Show is a very intelligent, quiet student um, who is the son of a police chief. And he just happens to come upon this book one rainy afternoon. Um, I can, in fact, I can't even remember if it was raining in the anime, but it was one afternoon in school. He comes across this book and... Um, just thinks it's it's a bit of a joke, you know, puts it away, reads it, puts a name in just, you know, for, uh, to test it out. You know, and the, the important thing is that he, he does all this. He does this himself. He's not coerced. He's not manipulated. He makes his own decisions. In the show, we have Ryuk, who basically forces Light to write these names in the book. He's encouraging him. He's trying to manipulate him. And that's something that I pointed out when we saw the little clip between Light and Ryuk. And I was like, no, that instantly doesn't work for me. Because Ryuk does not do that. Ryuk is bound to remain neutral in the world of humans. Um, apparently not so much here. Because he steps in at every single point that he can. He manipulates things. And he takes great joy in the trying to antagonize Light. Whereas in the show, Light and Ryuk's relationship was very much a beneficial one. You know, mutually beneficial. Ryuk would reap the rewards of Light's power, you know, sort of his, um, his power struggle with L because, you know, it was interesting to him. He wasn't in it for, you know kind of any particular gains you know he eventually ends up gaining because you know he ends up taking light's life but whilst he's there he's just there for the ride 
this Ryuk in the show seems to be there just to cause mayhem, you know, to kill people. And he's very aggressive, which, you know, fair enough, you can you can take that stance with Ryuk if you want. It's a different take on it, I appreciate that. Rather than the kind of docile, almost comedic Ryuk in the show. Um, that's not really too much of a problem, but the problem is, is when you start to make him manipulate and influence the settings and the actions of characters, that's when there's a problem. Um, Light is definitely... They don't, they don't make him out to be a very smart kid. You know, um, he does people's homework, sure. That just means that he's hardworking. Doesn't mean he's smart. Um, he meets this girl, or he knows this girl in school, Mia, who... Um, just seems very standoffish at first, but as soon as she realises he has this death note, she becomes infatuated, and within about 10 minutes they're declaring their love for each other, which again is another whole point of rushing things through. It's like, oh, these two characters who we've just met 15 minutes ago now love each other. Oh, I don't care. I really don't care. Um, the, the opening scenes are all over the place. You know, you've got the first death scene that comes up... Um, you know, they, they try and put in as well all this tragedy about Light's mum and, you know, his her killer going loose, you know, and, and the old, oh, well, let's have a look at some old snippets of newspaper clippings, you know, and, and the, oh, isn't it such a tragedy that this guy got away with murder, you know, it's like, come on, this is just such a... Why, why did we have to go down this, this angle? I mean, it's only really relevant towards the end of the film when it's revealed who, you know, Kira is. That's only the only time when it really becomes properly relevant, the little snippets of the paper clippings and all that. And you get to the first death scene, and I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, man, this is just Final Destination. You know, they make it so much... There's so much emphasis on the gore and the way people die. It's like... They've just wanted to make a gore movie here. It's just another toned down Saw movie, it's another Final Destination movie, they really don't care that this original source material they've used um, was very much a psychological thriller, you know, you never knew who was going to die, you never knew who was going to win, it was a constant battle between, you know, good and evil, L against Kira, you know, you never knew where it was going to go next, and there was always new players coming in, and there was always complex stories, and twists, and turns, and smart moves, and you know, it was just one of those those things that kept you on edge constantly. This film did not do that once. I was not on edge once during this film. I was just sat there going, that was stupid. That was dumb. This seems fast. Wow, we're there already. Wow, he's a god already. You know, it's like... It just, none of it made sense even in a normal, in a normal movie-going sort of way. Um, L... I said, you know, I like the way that the actor played L, but unfortunately the writing for L was trash, absolute trash. Um, I mean, I'm not one to be caught up on the whole sort of um, whitewashing of the characters, you know, because they're supposed to be Japanese, they're now American, you know, I'm not really that bothered, you know, at the end of the day, if this is a movie made for Western culture, then sure, throw in Western actors, why not? But they went through such... I mean, they bothered to make Watery Asian. Um, why not just make L Asian? Like, he is... I mean, L isn't Asian. Saying that, L isn't Asian in the anime. He's uh, he's British, I think. I think he's, like, half British, half Japanese. Um, it just seemed odd to me that they had Watery as Asian. Um, but they decided to keep L American. Uh, I thought it would have added a little bit more if maybe they had gone for someone who wasn't American as L to kind of add just a bit of, I don't know, just to differentiate the character. Because um, he just seems like a bit of a whack job for most of the film. You know, he's a little bit off. In the anime, again, he's proven on several occasions to be a great detective who's very secretive. There's all these rumours about this great L who lurks in the shadows. No one actually knows if he's if he exists. And within ten minutes of him being introduced, he's out in public making speeches. You know, he's speaking into the camera, not knowing how L actually kills people. And this is the problem, is that so much of the stuff is 
presumed, you know, and they don't actually fully explain it. And they don't explain how L comes to realize that the way Kira kills is by seeing them and and knowing their name. It's like it's just he just he just manages to deduce that. He's just like, oh well, I suspect that he uh, he needs their name and he needs to know their face to kill. And the the cops like, well, how can you be so sure? And he's like, I'm still alive. I'm like, okay, so you just risked your life just for that. That's not something that necessarily L in the show would have done. He was much more calm. He was much more um, precise in his planning. And um, I mean, I'm sitting here and just trying to trying to rationalize something in my head as to you know something constructive. I don't want to just sit here and say this film was god awful because it was god awful. I mean, look at the last fifteen minutes. The toning and the music was completely off. You've got Mia and Light hanging off of the Ferris wheel. And you've got this music that's more suited to Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, I, th- I was just... I was dumbfounded. I was like, okay, is this their death scene? Because if it is, I'm really not getting that idea that this is a death scene. Um, Light and L confronting each other was out of nowhere and unnecessary. It's like, why would L reveal that he knows that Light was Kira if he can't do anything about it at that point? The whole point through the show was that these two characters had been taunting each other constantly. They were constantly trying to one-up each other, learning a a little bit about each other, because both were a mystery to the other. Um, But in the show, it wasn't really like that. It was just like, oh, here's a great detective. Oh, he's already figured out that Light is Kira. Like, just... Boom, like that. I'm just like, what? What? How? How does he work this out? Um, it's just trash. It is trash. It's written in a way that, you know, someone's obviously gone, oh, this is a popular anime. Do you think we could make a movie out of that? Oh, sure, yeah. Let's uh, let's bring on Willem Dafoe. Willem Dafoe would be really good. Let's throw the majority of the budget at him and the CGI for Ryuk, and then we'll spend whatever pence are left on... The script writers, you know? Because I honestly get the feeling that whoever's written the script and adapted it has never actually seen Death Note before. Or they don't understand the source material. It's as far away from the source material as you could probably get within reason. Um, they made a mistake by trying to make an action movie out of this because it really is not the type of material to make an action movie. It's paced way too fast. The, the tone is all over the place. Um, the writing is awful. The dialogue is god-awful. When Light and Mia kiss, it's like, can I kiss you? And I, I'm like, why? I'm like, what is this? What is life? What are you doing, Light? Um, and yeah, it was just god-awful. I'm no professional movie critic by any stretch of the imagination, but... Even I know when a movie is bad. And um, you just, it didn't, it didn't stay in one place long enough for you to care about the characters. It didn't, the writing was so poor that you couldn't get involved in the dialogue. There was no smart twists. They tried at the very end to have a smart twist by, you know, revealing what light planned it all. And it's like, that's a very overly complicated plot to just try and make it seem like you're smart they're trying to imitate the show the, the you know it's it's imitation and not innovation you know it was someone's poor attempt at trying to think of what light would do in you know their their idea as to what light would do to come up with a smart uh twist to the situation and it just did not work another thing i found very funny is when he's lying in that hospital bed in a coma he wakes up and the next person to enter the room is his dad now if my son was in a coma, I wouldn't knock on the door. For, all, for From what he knows, is his son is still in that coma. So why is he knocking on the door? And then the door opens, he walks in, all gloomy-faced, you know, your Kira. Now, if that was me, even if I knew my son was Kira, sure, I'd be pissed. But hey, my son's awake, he's alive, he's going to live. Great. Show some emotion. He didn't. He was just like, sat down. Didn't make a mention of the fact he was awake. Just goes, it was you. It was you all along. And I'm just like, my word. 
Someone end the pain. End the pain. And thankfully it did end a short while later. Um, but yeah, it's 90 minutes I'm never going to get back. Um, Alex watched it as well. Um, me and Alex watched Death Note at the same time. You know, and oh, he hated it as well. You know, it was just... I don't think there's going to be many people who can say that was an enjoyable film. I would very much like to know your opinion on it, guys. Especially if you did enjoy that. Tell me why you enjoyed it, because I'm struggling to find reasons for it. Um, again, potential, yes. Missed the, 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 missed the mark by a long, long way. Um, in fact, I was looking up the scores on IMDb, and I think it's got like 42 on Metacritic, which is surprisingly high. Um, but again, I'm just thinking that they may be people who've never actually seen... Death Note before, they've just looking at that from a movie perspective and going, eh, it was okay, it was a bit fast paced and wasn't really my cup of tea, but it wasn't that bad. But again, if you're coming from it from the point of an anime fan, oh, it was terrible. But anyway, I think I've said it's awful enough now. Um, it's quite late at night and that film is putting me to sleep, so I think I'm going to leave you guys there. Um, I would very much like to know your opinions on the film. Um, I'm just... I'm dumbfounded as to how someone can screw something up so badly. And who approved this? You know, it's not a good indication for Netflix original films adapted from, you know, TV shows. It can just go onto the pile of things adapted from TV shows. Dragon Ball, Avatar. I'm sure there's a million others you can name. It's just another one to throw onto the pile and say, why did they do that? They shouldn't have done it. And it was terrible.